So there we go. We have our Quadro graphics card out. And just to appreciate the size, here's the Quadro. And this is the Zotac 1080 mini graphics card. And that's going to go in there. The reason we're using a mini is because of the clearance issues. You might be able to go ahead and use a reference card, but see how there's um, um, uh, a, a standard spacing between the bracket and here? Well, the reason is um, on this card, it is flush with the bracket there, if you, if you notice, it's, it's flush. Here it sticks out. The problem is that um, the door, it actually has an extra bracket there that I've removed since, that pushes the graphics card in, into place. So this will prevent the case from actually closing if there's a significant overhang on the graphics card. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to line the graphics card up with the slot there as well as the taps and push it in, push it into place. And what you're going to hear is a click. There's the click and it's in place. So if you notice, the graphics card does not overhang. For this installation, I've also added a really ancient hard drive there. It is a 160 gigabyte spinning hard drive. In addition to the bootable SSD, that should be plenty enough for our tests. So to install, so to finish installing their graphics card, what we would need to do is uh, plug in our adapter, plug in our adapter, facing the correct way. Make sure it's fully in. And then this 8 pin will go in here. Yep, the other problem we might run into is that this cable might stick out a bit. might cause some problems with the closing of the of the case. Preferably you would get the reference card because the reference uh, 1080s the pins are on the back over here so you can just plug them in. However the uh, I can only use this Zotac 1080. Next, let's uh, install the hard drive here. So you'd have to line these up with that. It's pretty simple. However, it is more complicated with bigger hands. So in this case, I would probably remove this hard drive. Insert this. There we go. And then um, what I would do is it, I was I would take this, prop it up, prop it up so it goes over top. 
and then lock it into place. This one is much easier. The last bit is to lock the graphics card into place. Now, um, let's try to close the case. Although I don't think it'll close. Let's at least try. Now let's see if it boots up. So we're gonna press that. All right, so now uh, we're in the BIOS settings of our Z600 workstation. After installing Windows, um, we see there are a couple of things in the BIOS, such as system information. So here we can see that we have two E5620 um, Xeon processors at 2.4 gigahertz. Um, system temperatures, we're measuring system temperatures of around 32 degrees on CPU1 and CPU2. And our ambient temperature right now is 26 degrees. We can set up security <coughs> um, or configure our storage options. Right now we have, like I said, uh, two hard drives in there. Um, and it boots from optical, USB, then hard drive. So we have our Kingston SSD, which should be the primary, and then the Western Digital 160 gigabyte, that's secondary. There's also OS power management. Um, I'll just leave all that at default, and then power on options, post messages, um, we can power off controls. Our uh, processors there. Oops. So hyperthreading is enabled on all the cores. And then we have it, our um, PCI slots. So those, that's our bio settings, in case you guys wanted to see that. Uh, we don't really need anything here. Um, as you can see, we can't really overclock anything. It is a Xeon processor, so however it is, that's how it is. Alright, we're in Windows, so now all we have to do is install something, uh, Chrome, thanks a lot. Actually before we do that, let's check out some things. So go to Task Manager, so there's our Xeon processor, and if we go to Logical Processors, there we go, eight cores and 16 threads at 2.4 gigahertz. We have 12 gigabytes of memory, two hard drives. Our score right now is 1,511 points. 
you look at the chart, we're right below the i7 6700HQ. So right now we're running Borderlands 2 at um, 1440p with maxed out settings um, and with unlimited frame rate. And right now we're at 140, 140 frames per second. So let's just jump in the game and see what, how we do, how we do. So currently we are 109. 109 frames per second. 90, 80, oh. Hundred and twelve, so this is City Skylines at four K, and um, right now we're running at this is four K maximum settings, everything maxed out. Uh, we're about twenty four. Per second. Um, thirty frames per second, thirty two. show you the settings options so right now they're more maxed out uh, I'm sure if we put level of DPL too high that might solve some problems yep still 20 frames per second so what we should do now is actually check out core usage. So it's mostly mostly using. Now let's try 1440p. So 1440p, uh, we didn't, let's do windowed, 1440p. So it's still same frame rate, around 20, 30 frames per second. And what that means is we're bottlenecked in the CPU. And basically we're only using one core of the CPU and because it's only 2.4 gigahertz, it's not fast enough. Although the gameplay is pretty good.